Did a startup just change the way that we all take and look at photographs? Why did Nokia hold a big launch party for a phone that's built on what it called a dead burning platform? Was it just a setup for the future? Something called C-Ray? Hulu's for sale. Does anybody care? Is Google TV coming back as a gaming box? And like that kid in math class who wouldn't shut up ever, but then you kind of missed him when he was out sick. Believe me, I had that kid in 10th grade. We've got more iPhone rumors for you. That's right, it's Techno Buffalo's Rumor Roundup. What is going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in to the Roundup for today, Friday, June 24th, 2011. I'm Noah Kravitz, editor at large for Techno Buffalo. And before, before I tell you the story of that kid in pre-calc who seriously just wouldn't shut up ever, but I missed him. I still like, you know, I got a fond place in my heart for kids like that. Maybe because I'm one of them. Before we get to that, uh, for more on any of the stories we're talking about right now, any of the latest going on in the world of technology, product reviews, opinion pieces, news, rumors, all that stuff, head on over to technobuffalo.com, our Facebook page, our Twitter feeds, all that stuff. And uh, if you're hooked in this Empire Avenue thing, like, like I am, I'm, I might need some help. I'm getting addicted to this. You can check out uh, Empire Avenue as well, NK126, that's all I'm saying. First off, what is Lytro and why should you care? Lytro is a Silicon Valley startup who just might have changed photography forever, or at least until the next, you know, forever thing comes along. Uh, they're the startup company that just came out of stealth mode earlier this week. They had a party at an art gallery. They've got stuff up now on their website, uh, samples and a YouTube video. They're getting all this press. And basically what they've done is they've uh, invented this thing they're calling light field technology. That, uh, that it boils down to this, as far as I understand it. When you take a photo, instead of focusing on something in the photo, like the way we take photos now, what light field technology does is it just captures all of the available light in the frame. And so their slogan is, shoot now, focus later. And so after the photo's taken, you can go to the photo, digital photo, obviously, they haven't invented refocusable paper, so far as I know, but you can go to the digital photo and you can click on whatever area of the photo you want the photo to focus on. And then you can also double click to zoom in and zoom out. So in their example, they have some cool examples up on their site. Uh, they've got examples of a photo where it's taken at a party and there's one person right up in front by the frame or by the, the lens. And then in the back of the frame, there are all these other people, all these other things going on. And so in one of their examples, it's pretty cool. They call these things living photos because you know, their, their whole shtick is uh, after you've taken the photo, you can, you, know, you can focus on different things and zoom around in the photo and catch all the stuff you might have missed when you actually took the photo, which is a big problem if you're a lousy photographer who shoots a lot of cell phone photos like yours truly. You know, shaky hands, blurry photos, all that kind of stuff. But in these, uh, in these light field photos, what you can do is you can just focus on anything you want. So they've got this example taken at a party and there's a woman up, up in the front of the frame right near the camera, but then in the background there are all these shady characters hanging around. And they've got a little YouTube video where they go through showing how uh, you know you can click on the different people in the background and they'll come into focus. And then you can remember, oh yeah, that was that dude with the tuxedo and he had a dog and a backpack and a beer in the other hand. What's up with that guy anyway? They've got some uh, neat examples and some professional photographer friends I've talked to, you know, when they checked this out, they were like, wow, that's really interesting. That's got a lot of potential. So keep an eye on Lytro for sure. Uh, no word yet on when we'll actually see these cameras and how much they might cost, but definitely very interesting technology. Nokia held a launch party earlier this week, a launch event, for a phone called the N9. The N9 honestly looks like a really, really sweet piece of hardware. It's a touchscreen phone, uh, you know, like Nokia does, very nicely made, comes in a bunch of different bright colors, uh, high-res display, very high-end camera on the back, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It looks like a great piece of hardware. And honestly, in a world of touchscreen phones, this one actually stands out a little bit with kind of cool design. But the thing is, it's running the latest version of Migo, which by all accounts is a dead software platform. Migo was this joint partnership between Intel and Nokia, and it had a lot of cool features. The N900 came out a while ago, and developers and hackers were kind of into it, but you know, never really sold well. Nokia's been going through some hard times, et cetera, et cetera. And then Nokia signed this deal with Microsoft to start making Windows Phone 7 devices, and Migo kind of left for dead. 
uh, even lumped into when the new CEO of, ne of Nokia talked about how they were standing on a burning platform in the sea with Symbian, mainly Symbian, but also Migo thrown in there, and how they had to jump off the platform and land on something else. Well, the interesting thing is that after all this hoopla about this sexy phone really with no future, then the CEO in a separate speech went and snuck in a little peek at this device codenamed C-Ray, same phone, running Windows Phone 7. Go over to TechnoBuffalo, you can get the pictures, you can check it out. Really interesting stuff. We know that the next version of Windows Phone 7, codenamed Mango, is coming out this fall. All kinds of new features on it. Looks like it really brings Windows 7, you know, catching up to the competition, Android and iOS in particular. And we're all waiting for the first Nokia hardware to come out, because Nokia still has a reputation for building quality phones with great reception and great cameras, which are two, you know, really big features that people want. So the C-Ray phone, really interesting how they kind of snuck that in. I like Nokia playing some games now, you know, maybe playing with the media a little bit, getting some attention, trying to build some buzz. Interesting stuff from Nokia for sure. Hulu went and put themselves up for sale. That, that, that's really kind of all I want to say about it. Uh, you know, it's really interesting because all these things floating around now about, well, is Netflix going to buy them? Is Apple going to buy them? Who's going to buy them? But then some interesting behind the scenes stuff. Apparently, uh, one of the things going on, you know, Hulu, they have all these licensing deals with Fox and these other big TV studios who have, uh, who hold stakes, ownership stakes in Hulu. And now there's some reports coming out about how, well, you know, we could sell Hulu, but we want to put a clause in that uh, the Hulu app will authenticate to see if you're a cable TV subscriber. And if you are a cable TV subscriber, then you can watch last night's Fox show, you know, right away. But if you're not a cable TV subscriber, you're going to have to wait eight days before you buy the TV show. I don't know, Hulu, you know, always a fan favorite, but kind of wondering like, well, well how's this going to play out in terms of a business model and, and, you know, generating revenue and really being something viable that doesn't just kind of compete with the TV stu studios behind it. Things getting messier now that Hulu's gone. They've gotten a couple investment banks to back their sale. They're officially for sale. It'll be really interesting to see how this plays out. Speaking of TV, back at the Google I.O. conference, Google talked a little bit about the next version of its Google TV box, which frankly, when it came out last year, did not set the world on fire. The first version of Google TV, uh, there was some Sony hardware, there was some Logitech hardware. I myself bought one of the Sony boxes, and then I took it back to the store. I had that 30-day return period, because I just, it was just, it didn't do that much for me. Some people really got into it for sure, uh, but didn't sell well, was sort of quickly swept back under the rug by Google and its retail partners. Uh, but now the next version of Google TV, based on Android, the Android 3 platform, which is promising to integrate Android across the different screen sizes, the phones, the tablets, and the TV screen. Uh, apparently, Google has sent out some developer boxes, and these are just dev boxes, very, very limited quality, so you can't read too much into this about what consumer hardware might look like. Uh, but a bunch of extra ports that weren't on the original boxes, some interesting stuff going on, and the chipset. Uh, the manufacturer of the chipset, it's an Intel chipset, the chipset promises uh, support for 3D gaming and support robust support for Flash. And apparently, the browser on this device is not the old Android browser, but it's actually a full-on version of Chrome. So very, very interesting stuff. Also some interesting stuff going on with uh, what Google is and apparently isn't allowing developers to do with apps that include a real-time TV feed. Because that's the whole thing about interactive TV. The coolest stuff I've seen is when you've got, you know, like a baseball game being played, and then you've got a graphic around it that shows real-time statistics of, you know, the players up to bat or other, you know, other games going on or whatever it is. So you've got that live TV element and then information that's related kind of going on in the same uh, on the same screen. And apparently developers are not yet getting access to do those kinds of things in this new developer build with these new developer boxes. So interesting to see how that all plays out and if Google TV can reinvent itself. And is there really going to be, you know, Chrome and apps and 3D gaming? Could there be something there? Interesting stuff. Last but certainly not least, in my 10th grade math class pre-calc, this dude who sat next to me, we'll call him Matt. I don't want to reveal his real name even though it was Matt. I love Matt. Great guy, smart, funny would not stop talking. Kind of like me on video camera. Except, you know, sometimes I was trying to pay attention in math class, sometimes I was trying to zone out, and Matt was just going, 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 going. But the days Matt wasn't there, 
you know, I missed him. That's kind of how I feel. I think that's kind of how a lot of people feel right now about iPhone rumors. Oh no, more iPhone rumors. But then when they're not there, you're kind of wondering what's going on with iPhone. Well, a new batch of rumors this week that point to not a minor update, but actually a radical new redesign, brand new, boom, 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 iPhone 5 coming out this September, possibly this August. I'm still thinking September, but some rumors pointing to uh, this August for a new iPhone 5. You can go over to Techno Buffalo, check out you know, all the details, uh, some render images, you know, supposed what it's gonna look like, etc. But kind of a radically redesigned back, a teardrop shaped back that uh, narrows from top to bottom, big screen, kind of bezel to bezel, or edge to edge rather, almost a bezel-less design. And uh, a little tidbit thrown in these rumors again about another iPad device. I still say we're gonna see another iPad this year. Sean says no. Either way, there'll be a funny YouTube video out of it, uh, depending on who wins our little bet. But uh, perhaps some more evidence buried in the iOS 5 beta about an iPad 3 with a retina display. We'll see. But at any rate, the uh, flames have been stoked. Matt is back in math class, talking, 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 so to speak, about an iPhone 5, a big redesign coming this year, you know, most likely to uh, coincide with the release of iOS 5, so stay tuned for that. All right, that's the time we got for right now. Definitely let us know what you think. Check out uh, check out Lytro, really interesting stuff. Go over to uh, Techno Buffalo, read the report, check out the photo galleries, you know. See, uh, let us know what you think about Lytro. Is it gonna revolutionize photography or is it just another gimmick? Yeah, you know better than I do. My name's Noah Kravitz, the website's called Techno Buffalo. Thanks to Revision 3 for having us. And uh, don't forget, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Ask the Buffalo, What's the Apps, and Rumor Roundup. Till next time, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you later.